Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am really good, Brian. We have got a big weekend of Kentucky Derby preps this weekend, but I guess the fans are wondering right now, where the heck are you? Uh, I'm down at the beach, Matt. Well, not at the beach right now. Right now, I'm at my hotel room here, but uh, enjoying spring break. But Matt, you're right. This is the biggest week of Kentucky Derby preps of the entire year. So let's get down in Derby, Matt. Let's start it off. First thing I want to do, though, before we start talking about all the big preps on Saturday, let's look back at last Saturday because no agenda pulled off the upset with a pretty nice looking win in the Florida Derby, Matt. Yes, Brian. It, uh, uh, Todd Pletcher, runner for uh, the, the St. Elias stable of our friend Vinny Viola, um, put all the pieces together in the Florida upside, uh, Florida Derby, pulled a mild upset uh, when he defeated Greatest Honor. Yeah, known agenda. Hey, he's been a horse that people have liked for a while. He didn't get it done in his first two stakes, but this was a nice win. Greatest honor was a little disappointing, uh, not kicking it in in the stretch map for third soup and sandwich in only his third lifetime race, ran a good race to uh, stick around for second, but it was clear. Known agenda is a horse who uh, was best on this day and also a horse who should be fine as we get into the classic distances for trainer Todd Fletcher. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian. And that was some good picks from your horse center co-host here, Brian, because I know you liked the, uh, known agenda as your top pick and soup and sandwich was my long shot yeah hey well for for those fans out there who say we never win my uh my published picks my published picks in in, in the article had uh the trifecta for three hundred dollars you were on soup and sandwich as your long shot so it was a good financial week for horse center hope uh, hope some of you out there had it or i hope all of you had it matt but anyway known agenda moving forward looks like a derby horse soup and sandwich is going to try the derby after only three starts now a very handsome gray for trainer mark cassie and i wouldn't give up on greatest honor yet i don't think that was his best race a mile and a quarter with more pace in the kentucky derby he might uh, run a race in there matt but let's move on let's move on because we have an undefeated champion to talk about Right off the bat here, Matt, we're going to go up to the bluegrass of Kentucky for the bluegrass, Matt. Grade two, I still think of it as a grade one, $800,000 a mile and eighth. We're going to see essential quality. Is he going to be the Kentucky Derby favorite? We'll find out a lot more here in the bluegrass. Yeah, that's for sure. We'll find out in the, in the remaining races on the Derby trail for sure, Uh Four for four, and on top of it, we already know that Essential Quality loves Keeneland. He's got two big wins on that on the track. Uh, the son of Tappet, Godolphin, got speed figures that are as good as anybody else's uh, in the field. It's hard to hard to knock Essential Quality in this race. Right. Well, you were you were getting exactly where I was headed, Matt, because I I just I always look for a way to poke holes in a favorite. And, you know, you could say, well, maybe he'll get beat on this day because he's due to lose or, hey, he's only had one race this year. But the truth is there's just nowhere to look uh, for negatives with this horse. He's been super in, in all four of his races, three last year, his return race in the Southwest where he went going away. It was a sloppy track. Maybe it wasn't the greatest field in the world, but he looked good. He did it easily. He looked like a mold, his old self. He's been working well all year. I mean, the son of Tap, it just looks like a horse who should go to the Kentucky Derby as either the favorite or, or, or one of the top two favorites. And as far as on Saturday, Matt, yeah, he's won at Keeneland nicely twice already. He can be a little farther off if the pace is fast. I think what we'll see in the bluegrass, Matt, is a, a slower pace because there's not a lot of speed in here. But he's proven that he can lay closer if he needs to. I, I can't poke any holes. He's a deserving favorite. The clear second choice now is highly motivated. Uh, the Nyquist winner from last last year uh, comes in for Chainer Chad Brown. He's only had one race as well this year, and it was a third in the Gotham. Yeah, and and like you said, it it is hard to poke holes in essential quality, but I think there are a lot of good things to look at with this Chad Brown runner, highly motivated, as you said. Uh, uh, the son of Into Mischief is already a winner on the Keeneland track, and that is important to me. And yes, he 
came up. He finished third in the Gotham, but uh, uh, that that was a good feel. I don't see that as a negative. His speed figures fit in with uh, the speed figures of essential quality, and and he looks like a horse that will make a nice step ahead, step forward off of that third in the Gotham. I'm going to say something very strange in here. I don't like the odds for highly motivated in the bluegrass, which is strange because I know essential quality would be the heavy favorite, but to me, essential quality checks every single box while highly motivated. Yeah. I mean, Chad Brown, he has his horses ready. He, he gets a lot of good horses, but I think there are some things here that worry me for highly motivated. Number one, first and foremost, he's never gone uh, two turns yet. And, and in the Gotham, I didn't think he looked like a horse necessarily that for sure wanted two turns. He could move forward. Like you said, that was his first race of his year. It was only the fourth race of his life. He, he did win at Keeneland last year. There are some good things. There are reasons why he's going to be a heavy second choice in here. But for me, I don't think he's worth the value against all these other horses behind him in here. So I'm going to use him below essential quality a little bit. But I think there's some long shots that could even beat him uh, for second. And that's kind of how I'm going to play the race. I know you like him better than I do in here, Matt. Yeah, I do. Um, you know, Brian, uh, essential quality is so much the horse to beat. And, and, and I don't have any reason to play against him except that he's four for four and eventually he's going to lose a race. And if he's going to lose a race, you know, this would be an okay one to do and still head on to the Derby, uh, uh, you know, with good credentials. So, uh, for all of you that always pick on me and say that I only pick chalk, uh, um, well, you know, here you go. I'm not going to pick essential quality. Well, I, I think I've called you a chalk eating weasel before, Matt, and I, I don't mean anything personal by that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, essential quality for me just stands above highly motivated. So you got a heavy favorite, you got a heavy second favorite. My my way of betting the race is trying to get somebody else in for second or third. Let's start with the others, Matt, because there's a bunch in here. Let's start with Hidden Stash, who also has a win at Keeneland, but that, that came a while ago. And the Vicky Oliver trained son of Constitution has been running well, picking up horses in the stretch in some stakes races down at Tampa Bay. Yeah, uh, he has. And I've liked the horse uh, in those races at Tampa Bay. And, and uh, at 10 to 1 on the morning line, there's a horse to me that has got some value uh, that I will use. I, again, I, I don't, I don't really feel like he's necessarily going to break through and get the win in here, but but I think he's going to bring good odds to the exacta and the trifecta. Yeah, and I think he was even higher on the track morning line. So uh, you, you're definitely looking at double digits there. I think on hidden stash, and uh, it's, it worries me a lot in here because there are horses without a lot of speed, and there is not a lot of speed. So I always think that's tough for a horse who really wants to come from behind in a race without a lot of speed. I see this as one of these kind of races. That makes me go to the next horse a little bit untreated. Now he hasn't shown speed necessarily, but the son of Mike was trained by Todd Fletcher made a very early move in winning at Tampa Bay Downs last time. I could see him being much more involved in the pace in here. And that win at Tampa Bay Downs makes me think that he's got some talent, Matt. And you're getting, he's getting the services of Joel Rosario uh, in this, uh, race at Keeneland and that's not a bad thing. And, you know, I don't know, this is maybe getting to be the MO, the new MO of Todd Pletcher. For so many years, we were so used to him having precocious two-year-olds that light up the board in the summer at Saratoga and at Belmont all over the country. But, but now we seem to have these later developing, talented, well-bred horses who are showing their best as three-year-olds, and, and we, we, we saw it with Known Agenda in the Florida Derby. We've seen it before with horses like Vino Rosso as they've gotten older. Um, so here we are uh, with Untreated. He could be another one of them. Yeah, obviously a tough spot coming out of a maiden race at Tampa Bay. He's only had two races, but I think he's a dangerous horse, especially if he's on or near the lead early, which I kind of think he will be on Saturday. A couple of horses I know won't be on or near the lead, Matt. Let's start with Keep Me In Mind. Keep Me In Mind had a very good two-year-old season where he was second in the Breeders' Futurity. 
third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and then he won the Kentucky Jockey Club over at Churchill Downs. He has some good history at Keeneland, but his one race this year was a little disappointing. Yeah, it was it was rather disappointing uh, uh, in his debut. And yes, the excuses are that you know his training was was kind of delayed in that horrible weather that they had for a couple weeks uh, uh, in Arkansas. But yeah, that was a disappointing performance. Um, uh, I don't like him in here. Yeah, I, I think he could move forward. He certainly hung pretty badly there. It looked like he might make a move in the uh, the Rebel behind Concert Tour, but then he never did any running down the stretch. I could see him improving off that back at Keeneland, a track where he's run well. But without a lot of speed in here, I just don't love him, even if he does improve. Um, I think I think it's a, a tough task to do any better than third or fourth without much pace to run at. And with horses that can also finish the race well, that will be ahead of him early. I'm going to say the same thing for Ron Bauer, who is a nice horse on paper, Matt. Ron Bauer is a son of Twirling Candy from the Mike McCarthy barn. Uh, came to Keeneland last year and picked up a lot of horses. He was fifth, but he did pass a lot of horses in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile. His only start this year came on a synthetic surface when he won the El Camino Real Derby at Golden Gate Fields. Yeah, trainer Michael McCarthy, who came up under the tutelage of Todd uh, Pletcher, has has done well shipping around the country. Has won some Breeders' Cup races already. Uh, this this guy, uh, Ron Bauer, as a two year old, was second in the American Pharaoh. So uh, you know, taking a shot uh, to pick up, but you know, uh, a top three finish and have a chance to get the Derby. Yeah, and, and both Keep Me In Mind and Ron Bauer are horses I could see getting into the Kentucky Derby Superfecta or maybe even Trifecta Big Oz. I just don't think this Bluegrass sets up for either one of them. Two nice horses, but a tough race setup here at Keeneland for the Bluegrass. Here's my long shot, Matt. My long shot is Hush of a Storm, a son of created cause. He did nothing, absolutely nothing in his only dirt race, but it was his career debut. I think he wasn't ready. He went to Turfway Park, got the top of a synthetic surface there, and really tore up the track with three nice wins, including the Bataglia last time. I think he beat some pretty good horses in his last few races up at Turfway, which, you know, it, it's relative. It's, it's certainly not the Keeneland grade one type of racing, but I think he beat decent horses. I think like uh, essential quality, uh, he can be a little bit closer to the pace than a, than a Keep Me In Mind or a Rombauer. I like his workout over the track at Keeneland. He'll be my bomb in the bluegrass. Yeah, and I think you're going to get really good odds on that horse. Uh, and you're talking about getting really good odds on a horse, as you said, Brian, that has won three races in a row. And, uh, you know, the son of creative cause, you know, who are we, Brian, uh, uh, to, to question uh, the trainer who could very well have just easily gone into uh, the Jeff Ruby stakes uh, last weekend? Uh, um, and picked up another win on the Tapita, but the trainer Bill Morey said, no, we're, we're going to take our shot. We're going to go on the dirt and see what we got uh, heading ahead, moving ahead. So um, he, he knows the horse better than we do. Uh, you're going to get good odds. Absolutely. And, and Matt, uh, uh, I think the, the workout for me was pretty key. Seeing a good workout over the track really makes me think he can carry over that good form of turf weight. It still might not be good enough, uh, but that firm form at turf weight was good. Let's get to our picks here, Matt, in the bluegrass. I am going to start because I, I'm on the chalk, folks. I'm the chalk eating weasel on this one. I like essential quality, but I will be using him with my long shot, Hush of a Storm, who I expect to be 20 to 1 in here. I'm going to use essential quality over Hush of Storm. I'm going to throw in highly motivated. I'm going to throw in untreated for sure in these trifectas and try to connect with Hush of a Storm running a good race in the bluegrass. Yeah, I, I, I'm like I said earlier, I'm going to take a shot that uh, the win streak ends for essential quality. And I'm going to go with Chad Brown and highly motivated. And my long shot pick is Hidden Stash. Hidden stash from the Vicki Oliver barn. I'd like to see her have a derby horse this year. So Matt and I are on very different, uh, making very different selections there in the bluegrass. Let's see if that carries over to the Wood Memorial as, as well, Matt. Uh, before we got on air, you were saying what a nice Wood Memorial this is. And it's led by the combination of prevalence who's undefeated and risk taking who's undefeated since getting blinkers on. Let's talk about prevalence first. 
out of the Brendan Walsh barn. Sure, Brian, and and you know this is uh, a really good version of the wood, one of the best uh, in years. There are four horses in the field that have already won on the Kentucky Derby Trail. When I did my early write up on Horse Racing Nation about this uh, race, I found myself classifying horses as being win contenders or just tossing them out. But the majority of them I left as win contenders and prevalence you started off with is one of them, a Godolphin homebred, two for two, son of Medaglia Doro, Brendan Walsh, uh, uh, two wins came at Gulfstream Park in a maiden special weight by a big, big margin. Got a little bit of a fever that delayed him slightly, but he came right back with a, with a very nice allowance win at, uh, at Gulfstream Park. We'll now travel up to New York and find a very, very different kind of racing surface. Um, speed figures for prevalence in those two races, frankly, were a little bit below some of the other horses in the field. That may have to do with the fact that those were really easy victories, but um, something that I'm keeping in mind because the low speed figures eventually caught up with uh, greatest honor in the Florida Derby last weekend. Yeah, prevalence for me, I mean, th this is where we're at, Matt. We're at a point now where we're going to see a lot of horses who've only made two starts running these big preps. That's where we are in, in racing today, like it or not. And and prevalence happens to be one of the ones I think is for real. Prevalence, uh, I, I look at physicality in a horse, and, and prevalence is, is certainly one of the nicest looking. He's got great breeding. I trust Brendan Walsh completely with a horse, getting a horse ready for a distance around a ground. And this horse just looks like a very, very good racehorse to me. Having said that, going to Aqueduct from Gulfstream Park, going from an allowance race to a, a, a tough wood memorial, uh, going up in distance to nine furlongs, it, it, is, it is a big ask of him. But if I had to pick one horse who is the most likely winner because of how good he looked physically and, and, and with a smoothness of stride down there in Florida, I'm going to pick prevalence as the most likely winner. Having said that, it's hard not to say risk-taking, who's won two races over the track at the distance in his last two, is the horse to be. Yeah, Brian, Chad Brown holds a pretty strong hand in this Wood Memorial, um, as, we will talking, as we will talk about. Uh, we, we have referenced the blinkers on uh, that have seemed to have turned uh, risk-taking around, put blinkers on, got a big maiden special weight victory um, at Aqueduct followed by a very impressive victory in the Withers. Um, also at the Big A, at that point, uh, Chad said, I'm going to leave risk-taking up in New York to continue trading there, but I'm not going to go in the Gotham because that's a one-turn mile. And they prepared for the Wood Memorial. Um, he's going to be tough in this field. Yeah, he, he makes a lot of sense in here with those two wins over the track at the distance. I think it's a big, uh, a big jump up in class for him too, though, because we're talking about Maidens and then the Withers was not anything like this Wood Memorial Field, but I certainly think he is a big threat, as is the other Chad Brown horse, Matt. The other Chad Brown runner in here is Crowded Trade, very inexperienced son of more than ready, but I guess he's had as much or maybe a little bit better in his two races experience than prevalence in that at least he was in a graded stakes race already. Yeah, Brian, and I liked uh, Crowded Trade going into that, into that Gotham and Crowded Trade is the one that I like from the Chad Brown uh, pair, the son of more than ready um, in the Gotham, uh, uh, came out of the gate a little bit slowly um, but still managed to uh, get himself uh, into, posi into position, took the lead going down the stretch, but, and then got into a stretch battle with the eventual winner, uh, Wayburn, from uh, Jimmy Jerkins, and we'll talk more about him in a moment. And they battled it down to the wire, and uh, Crowded Trade came up uh, just a nose and a very, very short nose, uh, from the victory. I really like this horse. I like that move. I like his determination down the stretch. I think he's going to move ahead. Speed figures were very favorable for a uh, crowded trade. Yeah, and I actually like the other Chad Brown 
better. I think the uh, the nine furlong experience for risk taking for me is key for him. Whereas Crowded Trade, hey, more than ready is an excellent sire, but I don't necessarily think of him as a sire who wants 10 furlongs. This is only nine furlongs, but it's nine furlongs against a tough field at Aqueduct. So I think distance is a question. And what I saw in the Gotham it was a very nice second race out for this son of more than ready. Uh, but on the other hand, it looked like he should win at the 16th ball and, and Weyburn was getting the best of him in the last hundred yards of that race. That makes me worry about nine furlongs here a little bit. I see him as the third choice in here, dangerous horse, but he's not gonna be one of my top picks. The horse who beat him that way, Weyburn, uh, you know, he, he's getting better and better for trainer Jimmy Jerkins, the son of pioneer of the Nile. He's a Canadian bred, it's bred to run all day. And I thought he was very, very game in that Gotham. And, and like I said, I thought he was the one running better in the last hundred yards of the Gotham. Yeah, I, I agree with some of the things you just said, Brian, but certainly not uh, with all of them. But it was a nice victory for Weyburn in there. And, and obviously, uh, I respect that because I like crowded uh, trade so much in there. Hey, he picked up 50 points. He's already in the He's already in the Derby field for uh, trainer Jimmy Jerkins. Um, I think he's going to get overlooked a little bit at the betting windows. Um, he won that Gotham at 46 to one and often horses like that don't come back and duplicate, uh, duplicate that form. And I'm a little concerned that a uh, trainer like Jimmy Jerkins is going to say, yeah, you know, we're in the Derby. I don't necessarily have to have Weyburn cranked up at a hundred percent for this spot because I'm thinking about the Derby and I'm certainly thinking about the Belmont stakes after that, but in his favor, as I said, I think he's going to get overlooked a little bit at the windows. Yeah. And, and, and I like his races over the track. I like the fact that he's got some speed. I like the fact that he was able to come back at crowded trade and I like his distance, uh, his breeding for a distance. So there's a lot to like for Weyburn if he's the fourth choice, which I, and projecting here, um, there, there is some value on a horse who, you know, was undervalued, obviously, in the Gotham. Another horse we need to talk about, Matt, is Brooklyn Strong. He's the son of Wicked Strong. Of course, Wicked Strong won this Wood Memorial, uh, oh, about seven years ago or so. Trained by Danny Velasquez, uh, he comes up from his park space where he hasn't run in four months, Matt. Yeah, and that's got to be a big concern in terms of going in and facing a field like this Wood Memorial. Uh, um, you know, he he looked really good at Aqueduct. He won a New York bread steak, and then he won the Remsen. We know he likes uh, uh, the surface at the Big A, and Danny Velasquez has had a lot of luck uh, bringing horses to parks and doing well. Um, you know, if, if this race was in January, I'd like Brooklyn Strong a lot more, but, uh, you know, that four or five month layoff uh, in this particular situation uh, keeps me from liking Brooklyn Strong. Yeah, and I, I do happen to like Brooklyn Strong in here. I, I, I would go as far as to say he is the most proven horse in a race. Now that's obviously two-year-old form, but I think his resume of accomplishments is probably the best in the field. Four months, four months these days is not as much as it used to be. He's working really well down at parks. Uh, I, I think he's a horse also uh, like risk taking who wants to run a distance. So I like Brooklyn Strong. I, I think he uh, can take his race to any track. He's working so well. He's already won nine furlongs at Aqueduct, be good horses doing it. I think he's gonna be, uh, uh, ignored at the windows to some extent with those brown horses and prevalence. I'm looking for him to be maybe near 10 to one in here. So Brooklyn Strong makes a lot of sense for me. Uh, yeah, I wish he had one prep for it, but this will be his prep for the Kentucky Derby. And, and I think he's a nice horse. So I like him a little bit in here. I know you like the next horse on our list a little bit, Matt, and that's dynamic one. Yeah, Brian, and, and I can just extend kind of what we've already been saying in the show. Here's another one of those later developing uh, three-year-old for Todd Pletcher, a son of Union Rags, had a very nice maiden special weight victory at, uh, at Aqueduct in March. So another one of these Pletchers that could be getting better. Again, do I necessarily see this horse winning the race? Um, maybe not. 
but we're going to get really good odds. I do see him as one that could get into the exotics. Yeah, and and I wonder for for my for my money as I'm looking at this race, I wonder if he's going to be over bet a little bit. And and what do I mean by that? I mean he might be ten to one, and I I don't know if he deserves to be ten to one. It, it took him four races to win his maiden. That that maiden race was awfully slow. I know he won nicely, but it was awfully slow at a slow track, Aqueduct. But it was still even for Aqueduct, it was darn slow. So he's getting better. Uh, I see him as a danger in here, but uh, in, in odds where you know he's always bad, 10, 12 to one. He's just not quite for me in this Gotham Candyman Rocket, Matt. I tell you what, I if you draw a line through the Tampa Bay Derby, you have to think of Candyman Rocket. He was the favorite in the Tampa Bay Derby he's going to be the the seventh choice in here if you could draw a line through it maybe he's one to throw in the exotics as well yeah that could be but boy brian he didn't do any running in the tampa bay uh, derby when things got serious to finish 11th however you know i've seen bill mott we've seen bill mott horses uh go in and out um, um many times before and you're right uh, 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 a horse with a win on the derby trail that's going to be out of close to 20 to one throw him in yeah throw him in for the exotics because uh yeah i don't know what happened in the Tampa Bay derby he he looked like he had a shot on the turn and then he just stopped running uh maybe that race is a draw a line through it and then all of a sudden you're going to go from favoritism to as matt said near 20 to one but i like prevalence as my lukewarm tepid top pick most likely to win but i'm excited to bet brooklyn strong a little bit here i think he's going to be eight to one or so folks Brooklyn Strong is my top long shot, and he's the horse I'm going to be betting most in the Wood Memorial. Yeah, I feel like uh, the winner is likely to come from the two Chad Browns and Prevalence. But as I've, I've uh, hinted at already, Crowded Trade is my top pick and my long shot um, to maybe sneak in for third or second is Dynamic Nice. All right. So that's two races in a row where Matt and I are very different. Let's see if we can carry that over to the Santa Anita oh, Derby, cool. Matt. This is the only great one of the group. Uh, 750,000 Saturday, mile eighth at Santa Anita. Medina Spirit, I expect to be the favorite. The Bob Baffert horse has only lost to one horse in his life. That's life is good. He lost to him twice. I think he's the horse to beat the Santa Anita Derby. Yeah, I agree with that too. And Brian, out of the three uh, races that were handicapping on the show here, uh, for me, this was the toughest one uh, uh, to, to handicap, sure. Uh, Medina Spirit, for the reasons that you said, you know, fishing second to life is good. Uh, Bob Baffert, et cetera, makes him the top choice and a logical top choice. But uh, quite frankly, I, I don't see him being that much better than several other horses in the field. Yeah, well, I hope I hope the betters are thinking that way, Matt, because I, I love the way he's been game. And I tell you what, he had uh, he had a, he had a uh, procedure done to uh, apparently he had breathing issues when he was second. He still was game enough to be second in that San Felipe last time. He had a procedure done that's uh, supposed to have cleared his airway, might help him. I think he's a horse who's super game. Nine furlongs should be right up his alley. There's not a ton of speed in here. I do think he's the horse to beat. And I think Dream Shake, uh, the second choice on the morning line, is a horse that probably will get bet quite a bit coming from the Peter Erton bar. Yeah, Brian. And again, uh, uh, you know, he's one of those horses that, uh, you know, ha has uh, run against the, the top Bafferts and, and, and has a loss by a large margin that, you know, doesn't look good, but we have to keep, uh, keep that in mind. I like uh, uh, I, I like Dream Shake in here for Peter Erton uh, in this field, just basically because uh, his odds are going to be a lot more favorable than uh, the what we're going to get on Medina Spirit. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure what the difference will be. I'm sure Baffert Source will be favored, but I, I don't know if they'll be real close or if there'll be a bigger gap like Matt's hoping there might be. Hey, the son of twirling candy looked good winning his maiden from off the pace. And then he made a move in that San Felipe before flattening out. A lot like these other horses who've only had two starts. If he can move forward, he's certainly a threat in here. I think Rocky World is also a threat in here, Matt. Uh, he's bred for dirt, candy ride out of an empire, empire maker, uh, mare for trainer John Sadler. And this one has looked very good in two turf races, undefeated, and he's the winner of the Pasadena at a mile last time. 
yeah, Brian, two for two on the turf, made in special weight, and that stake that you mentioned, again, I guess we have to defer to the judgment of a, of a trainer like John Sadler, who uh, knows how to win uh, big races and, and uh, assume that when he's taking a shot here on the Derby Trail, that Sadler thinks he's got a legitimate chance. Yeah, and I think he has a legitimate chance to take it to dirt. Uh, I have him as the third choice. I, I don't know if he'll be up near the top two. I'm, I'm hoping he's ignored because he's never run on dirt a little bit more, but uh, we'll see about his odds. I think he's the real wild card and the most likely horse who could beat Medina Spirit for me. Uh, another horse I think will get bad is the other Baffert, Matt, and that's another horse who's only run twice. Defunded looks pretty good. The son of dialed in, breaking his maiden last time. Yeah, Brian, um, a maiden win, but certainly not one of the Bafferts that we've heard very much about. Uh, uh, you know, if people are calling Medina Spirit uh, a second stringer for Bob Baffert, then, you know, then Defunded must be a third stringer at best. Um in here and, and I can't use this Baffert horse because just because he's a Baffert horse and he's going to get over bet because of that. Yeah, I expect him to be single digit uh, odds in here and, and there's not enough in the past performances for me to get excited. The stretch out till mile 8th might be good for the son of dialed in, but uh, like Matt, I agree, probably not worth the value. A horse who could be worth the value is Roman Centurion, who, who rallied nicely to split uh, some good horses back in the Bob Lewis. That was Medina Spirit and, of course, Hot Rod Charlie. He didn't really fire on last time in the San Felipe, went a well-beaten fourth. But I think the Santa Empire maker could bounce back against a little bit easier field going nine furlongs on Saturday. Yeah, I agree with that assessment, Brian. And, yeah, the, the you know, looking at the, uh, the past performances in the running line for the San Felipe, that does not look particularly good. But, you know, I already talked about that. Yeah, it was, you know, it was life is good running away from the field in there. Um, but if we go back to that Robert B. Lewis, where he was part of that uh, grinded out uh, blanket finish where both Medina Spirit, everybody thinks he's, you know, the, the the logical top choice in here. And then Hot Rod Charlie, who who came back and had that big victory on the Derby Trail. If we focus on that Robert B. Lewis finish, um, you got to like Roman Centurion at the odds in this race. Yeah, you're probably going to get double digit odds on, a, on an interesting rallier. Uh, the next horse on the list is not a rallier, Matt. He's the great one. And he had the unenviable task of chasing life is good early last time. That did not work out at all well for the son of Nyquist from Doug O'Neill's barn. But without life is good, perhaps the great one gets out on the lead and gets a little brave here in the Santa Anita Derby. Yeah. And as the, you know, and as a two year old, he finished second in the Low South Futurity, a uh, son of Nyquist. And as we know, those Nyquists have, uh, uh, really been running well on the Derby Trail. Um, certainly one to consider. Sir, one to consider, but his 14-length maiden win was when he got Lasix. He's not running with Lasix in these stakes races, which makes me wonder maybe he's better with Lasix. Uh, a danger on the lead if he's left alone for too long, but uh, I'm not going to be on the great one here. One bomb I want to throw in, Matt. His name is Otto the Legend. He's the son of Uncle Mo from Steve Asmussen. Asmussen had this horse... Uh, nominated to all the big races he's only run twice just like the funded last time though i thought he overcame some real trouble in a mile and 16th maiden race in arkansas in, at oakland park i think asmussen has some high hopes for this horse he's going to be big odds in here i could throw him in the exotics just a little bit on saturday yeah big big odds brian uh for a son of uncle mo but being a son of uncle mo uh uh is, is a positive. And, and as we know, uh, Steve Asperson is not going to duck competition and they're willing to, you know, send, uh, send this guy out West to find a favorable spot to take a shot on the Derby trail. Taking a shot. That's what's all about. I'm going to take a shot a little bit with him in the exotics, but I do like Medina spirit next. I think rock your world is a dangerous competitor, even more so than dream shake will probably be the second choice. So Medina spirit is my top pick. I have Rocky World as my long shot. He might, he might not be a true long shot in here, but my real bomb is Otto the Legend. Well, Chalk Boy, I, can't, I am not going with uh, Medina Spirit in here. Uh, um, as I said, I, I think his odds are going to be uh, uh, too low, 
when we talk about a, a field that I consider pretty wide open. I'm going to go for better odds with Dream Shake as my top choice and Roman Centurion as my long shot. Yeah, and I'm going to use Roman Centurion a little bit too. Matt. He, he's a horse. I wanted him to run in the wood because I thought he might be better at a track with a little bit more uh, deepness to it. But he's here in the Santa Anita Derby and he is also. I could have gone with him as a long shot as well. Hey, that's our show. You know, our producer, Tony Bada Bing, is mad at me right now, Matt. I did not mention that you need to hit that little red subscribe button earlier in the show. Sorry, Tony. Go ahead and do that now, folks, if you will. But hey, Matt, can I get a parting shot from you? Absolutely, Brian. A great weekend of racing. We're, uh, you know, heading towards the, the final preps. We got, a, you know, one or two more before the Derby and stay with us at Horse Center. Boy, we're going to be talking about Derby, Derby, Derby to get you guys ready for the run for the roses. Always talking Derby here at the show. Hey, thanks to uh, thanks to our producer, Tony Bada Bing, I already mentioned. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Thanks to Derby Wars, the best darn contest site out there, Matt. Next week, we'll be talking Arkansas Derby, folks. We'll also have our brand new Kentucky Derby top tens, which are sure to shake up just a little bit after all these preps this weekend. We look to see seeing you all here next week on Horse Center.